parenting in Blender is a fundamental part of the rigging process. But what is parenting? Well, parenting is when you form a parent-child relationship between two objects. And a parent-child relationship is when a child object inherits the transformations of a parent object. However, the child can still have its own local transformations in addition to the transformations inherited from the parent. It's kind of like how kids have to follow their parents when their parents move from one city to another. But once they're in the new city, the kids can still walk to school on their own. But why would we want to parent objects to another object? Oftentimes, parenting helps to more easily control the transformation and pivot points of a group of objects for the sake of animation. Some examples include parenting fingers to a hand, parenting objects or papers to the surface of a desk, or parenting leaves to a tree. Allow me to demonstrate. Let's take our cube, for example, and duplicate it with Shift D. Let's make this duplicate cube our parent object. Just for visual clarity's sake, let's scale this cube up a bit so that we know for sure it's the parent cube. We can then select both cubes using Shift left click and then right click for a context menu. Go down to parent and select object. For hotkey users, you can press control P after you have selected your objects to access the same parenting menu. Let's go ahead and start moving, rotating, and scaling our larger cube, and the smaller cube should follow. However, it doesn't. Uh, looks like we parented the wrong cube and accidentally made the smaller cube the parent cube. Since this isn't what we want, let's undo that with Control Z. Now, why did this happen? Well, it's very important to make sure you select your intended parent object last. This will highlight the object in a slightly brighter yellow outline, indicating that it is the active object. Once we've ensured that our active object is the one we want to parent our objects to, we can repeat the parent action again. Right click, go to parenting, and select object. Now we can move, rotate, and scale our parent cube, and as you can see, our child cube is following right along. An important note with parenting is that the pivot point of the child object is completely ignored when inheriting parent transformation. This includes instances where you select both the child and parent objects. However, transforming the child object still uses the child's local object origin. In fact, the child can still move around normally while parented, it will simply be influenced by the parent's transformations in addition to its own. A parent object can have multiple children objects, but child objects can only have one parent. For example, we can add a new cube to the scene by going to the Add menu, going to Mesh, and selecting Cube. This new cube does not currently have a parent, but we could parent it to the same large cube our other cube is parented to. This will give our larger cube two child cubes. Fun fact, if you want three child cubes, you can actually duplicate one of these cubes and it'll still be parented to the same large cube. However, what if we introduce another parent cube? Let's say we duplicate the larger cube, so now we have two. I'm going to name this cube Daddy Cube 1 and this cube Daddy Cube 2. If we select our child cubes and then parent them to Daddy Cube 2, you'll notice that all relationship ties to Daddy Cube 1 have been cut. Transforming Daddy Cube 1 no longer affects the child cubes. Meanwhile, Daddy Cube 2 now affects the transformations of the child cubes instead. As you can see, each object can only have one parent, but parents can have multiple children. Additionally, we can also have a chain of parents. If we select Daddy Cube 2 and then select Daddy Cube 1, we can actually make Daddy Cube 1 the parent of Daddy Cube 2. This will also make Daddy Cube 1 the grandparent, in a way, of our three child cubes. This chain of parents can go on for as long as you like, but it can't form a loop. In other words, if you try to parent Daddy Cube 1 to any of its own children or grandchildren cubes, Blender will prevent you from doing so, as that will form a cyclic dependency which is kind of like dividing by zero. This is the basic idea behind parenting, but it's important to know that it doesn't apply to only objects. Parenting works for bones and empties as well. Bones are what armature objects are made of, also known as rigs or skeletons. We'll go more into detail about bones in another video. 
but you can also parent things to empties. These are objects that contain little to no data except their own basic transformation data. They're invisible at render and are typically used for purposes of organization or reference. You can find them in the Add menu and can parent them in exactly the same way we did before with our cubes. Parenting objects to empties is a common practice, as you'll be able to transform and deform multiple objects at once very easily if they're all parented to the same empty. My favorite example of this is when working with environments that contain multiple objects and props. By parenting all of the environment objects to an empty, you can transform the entire set very easily with one movement. As an added bonus, the empty itself does not appear at render time. This makes it even easier to manually control where the pivot point for your group of objects will be for transformation. Now, real quick, you may be wondering, how do we unparent an object? Well, that's simple. Simply select the object or objects you would like to unparent and right click for a context menu. Then go to Parent, Clear Parent. For hotkey users, you can press Alt P to bring up the unparenting menu. You might also be curious about what the clear and keep transformation option is for. This is used for cases where the object you're trying to unparent has already inherited transformation from its parent for a while. And you want to keep that transformation, but removing the parent-child relationship actually removes that transformation entirely. So instead, you want to choose clear and keep transformation under the unparenting menu. As you can see, despite being unparented, the object has not moved from its previous location, rotation, and scale. If you simply choose Clear Parent, it will clear all inherited transformation from the parent and return it to where it would have been if it was never parented at all. Armatures are the foundation of what animators use to animate their characters. They are also known as rigs or skeletons, and like skeletons, armature objects are made up of bones. Bones are the individually moving parts of a skeleton or armature that dictate where and how the skeleton can move, just like real bones in a real skeleton. With armature objects, we can create and edit bones and then transform these bones to animate them. Let's see how that works. First things first, you can add armatures to your scene by going to the Add menu and selecting Armature. This will add an armature with a single bone. The cube is a bit in the way, so let's hide it for now in our Outliner. For hotkey users, you can also select the cube and press H, as in Hide. With this armature object, we have two modes other than Object Mode that we can go into. We can edit the bones by going into Edit Mode, and we can Pose Bones in Pose Mode. Posing is where you'll be doing most of your bone animation as well. You can enter both of these modes by going to the top left hand corner, but for hotkey users you can also press tab to toggle in and out of edit mode and control tab to toggle in and out of pose mode. But right now we only have one bone, so let's go into edit mode and change that. Once we're in edit mode, the bones that make up our armature object can now be edited. This is very similar to how we edit vertices, edges, and faces for a mesh in edit mode. Now, a bone is made up of three parts. The head, the body, and the tail. The head is the base of the bone, and also its pivot point. The tail is the narrower end of the bone, and the body is the main body. You can edit bones in three ways. You can select and move both the head and tail of the bone individually, or you can select the middle of the bone and move, rotate, or scale the bone as a whole. Now that we know that, I'm going to very quickly try to rig the spine of this character. You can download this character in the description down below. Let's go ahead and add an armature object like we did before, and then go into edit mode and drag the tail of our bone all the way up to the top of his head. If we want to add more bones, we can also do that in a number of ways. Using the Add menu at the top, we'll add a new single bone, not parented to any existing bones, which you can then move wherever you want. But if we want to attach it to our existing bone, we'll have to parent one to the other. Parenting plays a huge role in armatures and bone relationships, as it drives the foundation of how a rig moves.
When we select our new bone and parent it to our existing bone in edit mode, you'll find a few different options. Connected and keep offset. Connected will automatically move the entire child bone to the location of the tail of the parent bone. This is because connected bones must share a head and a tail. This is great for bone chains like spines where the joints are perfectly shared. However, keep offset will ignore this requirement and act similarly to how object parenting works where transformation is inherited regardless of the child's relative position to the parent. This is great for ears or eyes where the pivot of the deformation doesn't relate to the parent's tail position. Another way to create bones is to simply select a bone and subdivide it. This is done by using the right-click context menu and selecting subdivide. This will turn your selection into a chain of connected bones. As usual, you will have an operator panel appear in the bottom left that you can expand and adjust the number of cuts. But you can also extrude new bones from existing bones by using the extrude tool. This can be found in the left-hand side quick tools menu in the same way the extrude tool is used on meshes. For hotkey users, you can press E as an extrude as well in the same way. You can extrude bones from the head or the tail of a bone. Make sure you have one or the other selected and use the extrude tool. You can also extrude multiple bones depending on how many heads or tails you have selected. Bones created from extrusion are connected by default. You can disconnect these bones by unparenting them, which can be done through the right-click context menu, going to Parent, and selecting Clear. For hotkey users, you can also press Alt-P. However, here we'll see two options pop up. Disconnect will disconnect the bones, allowing you to move them away from the tail without affecting the bone it was connected to. But it will keep the bone parented to the other bone with an offset. Does this sound familiar? Well, that's because this is the same state as the Keep Offset option when parenting bones. On the other hand, selecting Clear Parent will disconnect and sever the parent-child relationship completely. Another tool you can use from the toolbar is the Roll tool. Bone Roll dictates simply how a bone is rotated along its vertical axis. This is typically its local y-axis. Why would you want to use the Roll tool? Well, assuming you have something simple like an elbow to deform, and you know elbows only bend in one direction, you would want that direction to be along an axis of rotation, x, y, or z. To view the axes of your bones, simply go to the Armature Data tab of your Properties Editor, denoted by this green stick figure icon. Then go to Viewport Display and check Axis. Suddenly, all of your bones' axes will become visible. You can use the Roll tool by simply left-click dragging anywhere in the viewport to rotate the axes of the bone to align with how you want it to transform later. You can also edit the Roll in the Bone tab of the Properties Editor, denoted by this green bone icon. Simply left-click drag the Roll value, or left-click tap and enter a number manually. And the last bone editing tool you can select is the Bone Size tool. This is not the same as scaling the bone, and you'll notice that if you left-click drag, it doesn't do anything. That's because these changes are only visible with a different bone display. Simply go back into the Armature tab of the Properties Editor. Under Viewport Display, we can open this drop-down to select different kinds of bone displays. For the Bone Size tool to reflect any changes, you'll want to choose either the B-Bones or the Envelopes display. Now, when we left-click drag this tool, you can see the width of our bone changing. You can read more about what each of these bone types do in the official documentation, which you can find in the description down below. But most of the time, you can choose one based on preference. I typically keep it on octahedral, but some people prefer stick, for example, to simplify the visuals. Now, let's go ahead and talk about how to use these bones for animation. In order to do that, we need to understand how pose mode works. Let's go into Pose Mode by either selecting it from the drop-down or pressing Ctrl-Tab. This will then turn all of our selected bones blue. Transforming a bone here will actually record location, rotation, and scale in the individual bone data. With this, we can finally add keyframes for these bones in Pose Mode by right-clicking and going to Insert Keyframe, Lock Rot Scale. This lets us animate. But you may have noticed 
that when we move our bones, our character still doesn't move. So how do we make sure our bones actually move our character? In object mode, we can simply select the mesh, shift select the armature object, and open the parenting menu either through the right click context menu or control P. You then might notice the option for armature deform with three sub options below that. The most commonly used one is with automatic weights as it gives us a great starting point, but feel free to read up on the other two options in the official documentation. Once we've selected this, you'll notice that when you transform individual bones, each bone has been assigned a group of vertices that will deform with it. This is being handled by vertex groups, also known as weights, which have been automatically generated by Blender based on the placement of the bones relative to the mesh. We'll be going over vertex groups in a separate video. If you select your mesh and go into its modifiers tab, denoted by the wrench icon, you'll notice that it now has a new modifier as well, the armature modifier. This is how Blender uses armature objects to deform meshes based on the transformation of individual bones. Now obviously this rig is incomplete, and if you want to learn how to rig the entire character, you can head over to our character rigging video. But I hope this gave you a good idea of how armature objects work and how to edit them. Thank you.